So this week we're making two knives. They're both the same basic design, but two slightly different handles. These are commissions for paying clients and they have been sold as vegetable knives, utility knives, kitchen knives, but actually you could use a very similar design as a bushcraft knife or anything along those lines. It's actually a really useful, just multi-purpose design of knife. The basic construction follows a very similar pattern to the construction that I've used on previous knives uh, and will continue to use. So what I'm going to do, actually, there were some really useful learning points in this process because these were a couple of the very early knives I made. So I really was sort of learning things as I went along and there are things which I've now applied to my knife making, which you'll see in future videos. So. First of all, we got them cut out with the angle grinder from the templates and then started using hand files to refine the profile. The big thing I learned at this point was that hand files are fantastic for that slightly more delicate stock removal and very precise stock removal, but you scratch up quite a lot so you then need to do some extra finishing afterwards and actually with a delicate touch an angle grinder is almost as easy to use to be able to refine that profile using a flap disc. I've also refined my workflow just in terms of making my life a little bit easier at various later stages with regards to taking out tool marks with hand sanding both before and post heat treat. So here still just refining the profile using sandpaper just to finish off those edges. Again, if I'd used a flap disc at this point instead of the hand file, there would have been a lot less tool marks to have to remove from those edges. This sanding disc on the pillar drill is absolutely fantastic and it does make some of the smaller, particularly where you're trying to get almost circular cuts. I don't have access to a belt grinder, so it does make life a lot easier in terms of getting those small circular grinds in, but you do tend to go through a lot of sandpaper. So we're going to put a 3 8 mosaic pin into the very end of the handle and two six millimeter pins into the front of the handle. So I've got brass pins and then that mosaic pin which I've bought from Ground Flat Stock GFS Knife Supplies. I am hoping to learn how to make my own mosaic pins but that will be a project for down the line. So initially, when I started creating the bevels, I decided to try using hand files. It is possible, it's very doable, you can see that it is removing stock. It just was going to take a very, very, very long time and actually with these knives I wanted a slightly convex grind from the spine of the knife down to the blade. I wasn't going to be putting in any extra drop lines or anything like that. So having tried this way. I very quickly realized this was just going to take an exceptionally long time. It was going to exhaust me and I wasn't sure that actually the end result was going to be better than trying any other technique. So 
So my next response was to try and use the drum sander on the pillar drill, but like I say, it just goes through sandpaper so fast. There's so little sandpaper on there that you just end up having to change them constantly. And it wasn't really making a huge amount of difference. So I decided to get the flap disc out, use that to create the primary bevels. I would not recommend doing this in a shed. The only reason that I did it in a shed for this particular knife was because it was raining outside at the time. My shed is a grand total of eight foot by six foot. It is not a big shed. And Emma did phone me just to say, am I seeing sparks coming from the shed? I had to confess that yes, indeed, there were a few sparks flying around in the shed. Do not do this at home. So one of the other tricks that I learned subsequent to this was twofold. I don't think I finished it as well as I should have done. I then used a hand file to try and just make sure that I had a nice flat bevel. Actually, I don't think the hand file really helped level off that bevel as well as it should have done. It then meant that I had file marks that then take a lot more hand sanding. What I've done on subsequent knives is use a 60 grit flap disc initially to create the first bevel and then use a 120 flap disc to be able to smooth everything out, which just means that then hand sanding becomes far, far easier. The other option is I could have done what I did with the hand file there and then gone back to the flap disc just to actually take out those marks. But it just meant that I had a lot of hand sanding to do to be able to get rid of those tool marks. By going up to a 120 flap disc now, it just takes away a huge amount of this hand sanding. The file also just left a few gouges in the blade, which I then had to smooth out with hand sanding, and that took a very long time. I then cleaned up the flats on both the blades. Remember I'm working on two side by side here. And then took a record of the exact outlines. I just like to keep that for future reference. Two handle materials that I was using, one was English walnut and the other was olive. The olive wood handle had actually been requested by a client for lockdown. She has been eating nothing but olives during lockdown. So this is a kind of knife to reminder of these fun times. So drilling out the pinholes in the handles and checking the fit up, making sure that everything fit fairly snugly. This is my next lesson from this. I was just taking so long to saw through these brass pins with this coping saw. It is a hacksaw blade that's on there, a sort of mini junior hacksaw blade that's on there. I don't know whether it was blunt or whether it just was such a fine cut it was taking me an age to get through here, but trying to get through the mosaic pin with this saw was not fun. I don't think I've got it on video just because I got so cross by this point, but I just ended up using a hacksaw and I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place. This is another lesson that I've learned. I don't know why I did it this way, but I cut both of the handle blanks separately for the walnut. I don't know why I did them separately, because it just meant that I then had very uneven handles to work with afterwards. So we did a normalization cycle in my coffee can forge. In fact, we did three normalization cycles for each blade and left them to cool in still air between each cycle. Mm -hmm. 
getting my quench tank ready there with canola oil, rapeseed oil, heated to 60 degrees on my little Coleman stove. Checking the magnetization temperature. And then that is my air cooling setup. So first one ready for quench. All went well, thankfully no warps. And second one ready for quench as well. Again, no warps. You can see that increased fluidity from heating up the oil there. Yeah, I was really shocked at actually how cold the map gas cylinder got. Froze a couple of leaves to it. I knew it got cold, I didn't know it got that cold. So having tempered in the oven at 200 degrees for two hours, then proceeded on to hand sanding. And again, this was where I just hadn't done enough finishing before the heat treatment. So I had a few scratches and a few bits and pieces to work out. And if you're hand sanding, that just takes a very long time taking out of hardened steel. So I've refined that for future projects. Again, using wet and dry sandpaper, uh, Norton Black Ice and working up to 2,500 grit. That was one thing I had learned. I'm using a little bit of leather there just wrapped around the sanding block just to keep the blade clean. In one of my previous projects I turned it over and promptly discovered that I had scratched the reverse of the blade by not putting on a clean block to do my hand sanding. So I then had to rework that side. So just smoothing off the inside edges of the walnut ready for fit up. This was where my first disaster happened. I had the two pieces pinned together so that I could finish off the blade facing end. Got them all sanded up to 400. Really pleased with the results. Thought they were looking nice with a nice chamfer on them. And then as I went to take them apart, it broke. I think there must have been a flaw in the wood. I didn't see any sign of it before, but yeah, I if I'd just been making this knife for myself, I probably would have just glued it all together and hoped for the best. But as this was being sold to somebody, that's not appropriate. So I had to wait five days to get new walnut sent to me because I'd run out of walnut and started the process again. So sanded the inside edge, made sure everything was nice and flat, made sure they fit together well. Redrilled all the holes and then glued everything up. Don't think I've got footage of gluing the walnut handle together, but I do have footage of gluing the olive wood handle together. I think I was just a bit cross about the delays at this point. So G-Flex epoxy to glue everything together, pins in, plenty of epoxy, clamp everything up and leave overnight to set. White spirit there just to make sure that everything around the blade is completely clean. So once it was all glued up, used the flap discs again on the angle grinder to do my initial shaping. Hand sanding this would have taken forever. Olive wood is unbelievably hard. And then using a flat piece to try and create a nice flat edge along there and get the brass pins shined up. I ended up going back to the angle grinder to actually put a chamfer towards the bottom edge of the handle just because it felt very square with it completely flat. So again, this is something else I've learned in terms of my handle designs. I much prefer having a slightly, not completely triangular handle design, but certainly with those sloping insides. So I now do far more work using the angle grinder. Again, that drum sander, very, very useful for getting into those concavities on the bottom side of the handle and then starting to shape the handle. So nice rounded back and then cleaning up the inside. 
hand sanded everything to 400 and then wet the wood and sand it up to 600. And then a coat of white spirit and then a coat of tongue oil. And that white spirit just helps that tongue oil really soak into the grain to really bring out that beautiful olive wood. And this is finishing off the walnut handle. Same thing, 400, get it wet, 600, white spirit. Yeah, I got a little bit of epoxy stuck in the mosaic tube. So it is a mosaic tube rather than just a straightforward pin. It's just using a little needle file there to clean that out. Now, I think both the olive wood and the walnut look absolutely beautiful. I did a poll on Instagram that came back exactly 50-50 out of all the participants. Feel free to follow me on Instagram. I'm at, at little tipple. But yeah, the poll came back exactly 50-50, which is how I felt about it as well. But I'll leave a poll on here. Let me know which do you prefer, the walnut or the olive? And then tan sharpening, which again, I think there is definitely a step to be made here by creating the initial secondary bevel. I think this will be a really good use for the drum sander, just to be able to create that first stage of secondary beveling and then going on to hand sanding so it won't take quite so long. But working through 180, 600, 1000, 3000. and then stropping with a medium and fine compound. And yeah, that seems pretty sharp, but I managed to actually find the paper. And I did this way too far away from the camera, but actually I'd forgotten the camera was rolling and just want to check it, but yes, it shaves. Now, the one thing I forgot to do was take any video of it completely finished, but I did take some photographs of them finished. So here are the finished products, the olive wood and the walnut utility knives, vegetable knives, bushcraft knives, call them what you will. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any comments or suggestions or anything I could do to potentially improve my workflow, I'd love to hear from you. So please leave a comment in the section below. Please like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you'd like to see more. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.